7 o'clock and I'll call the February 23rd, 2015 school board meeting to order. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, under God indivisible with liberty and all. Thank you. Roll call, Mrs. Mayor. Yes, I will do that. My voice is kind of scratchy, but I can still do this. Tom Cruise. He is excused. All right. Um, Alex. Here. Thank you. Cheryl Hancock. Here. Anita Zhiganzinski. Here. Myself, I'm here. Tim Medeker. Here. Um, Lisa Collins. Here. And Gary Dudlap. Here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. With six of the seven school board members present, I would declare a quorum. Um, board norms, as you recall, our board norms are in our folder, so if you please take a minute to take a look at those, that would be great. Approval of agenda. I would note that the agenda has been posted, distributed, and sent to the local media. With this in mind, are there any changes? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda as published. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Okay, a motion has been made and seconded to approve the agenda as published. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. Public participation. Is there anyone who wishes to address the board relative to any item at this time? We ask that a five minute time limit per person be followed. Please come forward, state your name, address, and topic to be addressed. In here? Yes, in that mic, thank you. Okay. Hi, my name is Angela Page. The last name is spelled P-A-G-E. Our address is N for North, 5633 Oak Hills Drive. And that's on Alaska, Wisconsin. And I am coming to the board tonight to discuss an incident that happened at the high school on Friday, um, wherein my uh, son sustained a physical injury and um, would like to just call some things to the board's attention and, and ask for um, some action moving forward. May I proceed? Start. Yes, <laughs> okay. Um, let me first say that I am not a graduate of Holman, but my husband is uh, graduated in 1985. We have raised five sons throughout the Holman School District, um, very proudly. Our youngest is seven at Sand Lake. Uh, the oldest is 27, and he is um, an EBD teacher at the School District of um, Toma. Additionally, we had a younger brother of mine who needed to repeat a year in middle school in a different school district. We moved him to this school district out of pride because of the reputation the school district has and because of our overwhelmingly positive experiences. Um, so I, I wanna share that so that no one here feels that my statements are anti-Holman or uh, anti-school district of Holman. Um, I'm coming here following due process because I truly believe that um, that your faces and your, your ears are here to, to hear my concerns. Um, on Friday, my 15-year-old son, he is a freshman, um, in the middle of his lunch, purchased a couple of granola bars, was approached by another student of the same grade, and I will just, uh, I'll just refer to him as S. Um, this uh, young man, asked for um, a granola bar. My son, being caring and compassionate, said, sure, gave him one, walked a few feet away, and was called by name by S. He turned, and that young man threw the granola bar, striking my son in the face. Not a serious injury, and if that was how it ended, I would not be here. Um, uh, Moment later, a few minutes later, my son uh, returned to the vending area to buy a drink, passed back by this individual 
who then asked again for granola bar, and my son said, I really um, don't uh, think that's a good idea. I don't want anything thrown at my face again. And S extended his right hand, um, saying something to the effect of, it's okay, or we're chill. So my son extended his hand back, um, assuming it was a mutual <coughs> handshake. The, uh, the other student, S, then turned my son quite aggressively, from what I'm told, um, into what's called a bilateral vascular restraint. So if I can demonstrate it, my son would be forward facing in front of this other much larger student. My son's head and neck were forced to the inside of S's right arm, I believe, and S placed his left hand and arm as such, shoving my son's face and neck into S's right um, inside of his elbow, essentially. Um, I can't uh, tell you what it looked like, but because of confidentiality, I'm not allowed to watch that video. Um, part of the reason I'm here is because uh, we were only called when my son presented to the nurse's office. Um, when uh, he had a headache and neck pain and was dizzy. The nurse called us, um, my husband and me, my husband's name is Jim, um, called us because of uh, the trauma to my son and, and his physical complaints. Um, to, to find out what we wanted done. We did go to the school. We learned um, from Mr. Bear directly uh, that he had watched the video uh, that was captured um, by a video near the main entrance of the high school and that in essence that is exactly what happened. Um, Officer Hickey, I believe, was in Florida at the time. Um, so there was no uh, police school liaison or police officer uh, at the school. And I believe Mr. Sackett was uh, down at the um, like Oak Grove or out at Prairie or, or somewhere else. Um, so uh, I have to you know, let the board know that obviously this was traumatizing, um, not only to my son, but uh, to us as parents to have something like this occur. Um, we've learned uh, several things since then that this student um, routinely um, uh, kind of checks out of fourth hour, gets a pass, and then shows up at other classes that he finds interesting, often um, something like uh, gym class that my son shares. And Angela, your time is near its end, so if you could wrap up, please. Yes, ma'am. Um, so what I would ask, I did speak briefly with Dr. Carlson's assistant today. I know that he is out ill. Um, I will be speaking with him <coughs> tomorrow. I would ask that the board um, investigate this. Um, the, the key things that I'm asking for are uh, the fullest punishment um, that can be allotted to this other student. This student is not a first time violent offender. Um, to my understanding, and according to state statute, what has occurred meets the criteria for bully bullying. Um, I would ask for root cause analysis uh, to be carried out as to why uh, the situation escalated the way it did, that we were not contacted, um, and actually the student, uh, while the, the video was being recorded and my son sat in the nurse's office, the student was back in his regular class. Um, and I feel that's quite um, an unsafe situation, um, especially given the climate in schools. Um, and then thirdly, I would like to ask that the district, um, after this root cause analysis, reevaluate any training um, and update staff as to appropriate measures that should be taken and when um, something like this occurs as the we actually had to call the police ourselves when we arrived they were not going to be contacted okay thank you and that does I know that our practice under um, 
public participation is not to respond um, to individual issues that are brought to us. Dr. Carlson would be following up with you, and it sounds like that's already been arranged for tomorrow, and you'll have an op ample time to share your concerns with him at that time. So, but thank you for coming forward. Yes, thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board at this time? Alex, your name and address for the record. Um, Alex Ockery, A-A-K-R-E, 1001 McHugh Road. Um, it is National Holman FFA Week, or National FFA Week, sorry. Um, and the Holman FFA, um, I actually made this one myself, so I'm very excited <laughs> about that. Just used a little bit of castor oil. Um, it will, yeah, this is for you guys. And I know how much Tom really likes free food and I'm kind of sad he isn't here. <laughs> um, but if anybody in the audience would like some, just make your way up. I don't, I don't know the protocol for this. I think if you want to put it on that front da table there, then people... Um, well, what is that free food? Is it really good food? It looks like cheese and sausage. Really good food? Well, what is okay. that? So we have um, um, some pepper jack cheese, some cheddar, and some other cheeses stacked up. Um, on some meat and some crackers with it. So just I would I would like some of that then. <laughs> that sounds good. Okay. Um, so if we pass it around and the visitors. Sure. Why don't we do that? It. If you want to pass it down, and then we can have Christina put it on the table. How does that sound, Alex? Another, another job but for you. thank you so much for your thinking of us. Yep. Is there anyone else who would like to address the board at this time? Okay, then we will continue on with our agenda. District Administrator's report is, um, you have, it's been indicated Dr. Carlson is out ill today. Um, so cool. I think we will um, move on without any report. So reports and discussion, referendum update. Um, Dr. Carlson um, asked me if I would just encourage you to let him know about your availability on the March for the March 4th, 16th, and 31st public presentation um, that will occur regarding the referendum. As you recall, these are information sessions for the community. We want to invite the community and make sure that the community, meaning um, all stakeholders, are invited and will take some take the opportunity to attend, um, especially things um, he could utilize and would really appreciate your assistance to sit at the tabletop presentations. I know they're broken into different groups, but just the referendum overall, there's a table with uh, technology, a table regarding buildings and grounds, um, the finance part of the referendum, all of those kind of things, so that if people want to come and have specific questions, then instead of going through a whole presentation, they'll be able to hear um, and go and get their questions answered by those um, subject experts. Um, of course, there will be a small introduction to each, but I think they're talking about an hour and a half, possibly, for those presentations. So again, the dates are March 4th, the 16th, and the 31st, and if um, I know staff members are facilitating those, but Dr. Carlson would really like to have um, board representation there. Now, I did have an inquiry. I know Lisa had um, also brought to my attention or request the potential of us having some presentations, maybe a presentation next meeting on the technology and what's happening in the district on technology and what those referendum dollars might specifically be used for and then also at the next meeting a presentation on the maintenance and the transportation and the you know the uses of those dollars that we see how we see them um, so I will be taking that request to Dr. Carlson and we'll see at our last Last workshop, you know, we talked about reducing the number of presentations that we have, but with the referendum, this might be one of those key items that we would really want to have a, 
another opportunity for information. So um, that is something else related to the referendum. I know Dr. Carlson has made presentations to Evergreen. Um, he is scheduled to make a, to Evergreen parents this evening. Mr. Bayer is um, at the high school because high school parents are there for parent-teacher conferences, and so he will be doing a presentation there. Jan Wee is there to assist them, and there are other presentations <coughs> taking place. I know Rotary is scheduled. The Business um, Association has a, a, a presentation scheduled. Scheduled. So we're really encouraging the community that if they would like a presentation at a meeting or an event that they um, please let us know and we will make that happen. So then um, moving on to child first lease agreement and renewal. I'm not sure if Jay are you prepared to report on that? I don't have anyone else's I'm name. Not. Well, we do have the position paper. Oh, absolutely. Wendy Savatsky is coming forward, it looks like. Oh, we've got a couple people coming, so thank you. Good evening. It's that time of year again to renew our leases with our community partners and our community partner continues to be child first. Sue and I met with them late January, early February and discussed the lease and came to an agreement and I don't know. No, I think I think that was it. Um, both parties were very happy with the the arrangements what we have right now and um, I think they just had mentioned that because they also lease from the person who owns the building that their cost goes up I think they said by three percent so they were just asking for um, two hundred dollars additional from what we had paid for the lease amount this year and I think that's coming to us at the next meeting then for approval yes so any questions of the board Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Then the next item is the cooperative agreements, boy swimming. I think Mark is here, hopefully ready to. Good evening, my name is Mark Englert and I'm the activities director for the home and school district. And the purpose of me being here tonight is to ask for our request, a renewal for our boys swimming co-op and actually make a change to that boys swimming co-op at the same time. Uh, give you a little background. We have been a uh, two school district co-op for a number of years between Onalaska and Holman and have done quite well with that co-op. Uh, but our numbers have been dropping. We've had higher graduation rates coming out of our co-op and smaller numbers coming into our co-op from typically the WAVE program, which are most are, where most of the kids uh, at the lower level uh, come out of. And after contacting the WAVE and the middle schools of the two school districts and checking into numbers, uh, we would be fine for next year. Uh, the minimum number you would want to have to run a, uh, a co-op swim team would be 12. 15 would be a number you could be comfortable with. 20 would be a nice strong program. And uh, we would be at 14 if we stayed with just the two school, two di two school districts for next year. But in the uh, year after that, we would drop down to that number 12. And it would be concerning of whether we'd be able to hold a co-op together. We have had a parent approach our school district in request to be part of the uh, the co-op actually we've had multiple parents from multiple school districts and as part of that process in uh, deciding whether we want to expand the co-op uh, we've created a criteria guideline that has been accepted by the MVCADs uh, to help guide us on making the right decision and uh, through that, developing those guidelines, uh, we, we thought it best to add uh, the Aquinas School District into the Boys Swimming Co-op, uh, particularly because in the second year when we're very low in numbers, 
There have been recognized 12 athletes coming from lacrosse. We're not sure which school districts they'll eventually end up in, but there would be a potential <laughs> to gain some students in that very low year, which would help keep the program sustainable. And so we come to you tonight to request to not only renew the boys swimming co-op, but also add the Aquinas School District to that co-op as well. Okay, any questions? I think that again will come to us at the next meeting for approval. It's not on our consent agenda for this evening, but it will come. So if you do have questions, please uh, forward those questions on to Dr. Carlson. But thank you for the work. I know it took a little work and we've um, heard from some folks about the concern and could they co-op with us and all of that. But I think you went through some work and with the co-curricular committee um, had some input and discussion. And so we really appreciate that process and the thoroughness of it. So thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, and then consent agenda. You know, Anita isn't running the meeting, but it almost feels like it, doesn't it? <laughs> so we have five items under five items under the consent agenda this evening: board meeting minutes, personnel report, financial claims, and accounts. I know budget status reports and summer school. So. <laughs> I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented, unless a board member would like to pull an item out. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Okay, is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries. So then we move on to board member reports and discussion. Um, I'll call on board members in order of roll call so that they can report to you on any committee reports or comments that they may have. Um, so we'll start with Alex. Tom is not here, so you get to be up first, Alex. Um, I don't have much. I have a little bit on the, the referendum going in part of that. Um, and it is my understanding that Chromebooks, if we did implement the one-on-one -on -one technology, Chromebooks would be the technology we implemented. Um, and so I got a lot of negative feedback on that. Um, from the students on Chromebooks. Personally, I can't stand Chromebooks. Um, and so I wanted to see, you know, if that was just me or if there was, this, um, you know, any data to back that. So I went around two or three classrooms. I, um, I guess I asked 25 different students the question. Um, before I told them Chromebooks would be used, there was a 92% approval rating for the referendum passing. And then when I told them Chromebooks would be used, as technology that dropped to a 28 percent approval rating um, and so you know it got me thinking are these really the best option are these going to prepare us for the future because that's really what high school is preparing you for your career so I called um, a few places around town um, I contacted someone at UW Stout Gunderson Lutheran uh, the La Crosse County Courthouse and La Crosse County offices, um, train and Dairyland Power to see, you know, what computers they're using, you know, as opposed to using Chromebooks. Um, no one used Chromebooks. Uh, a lot of Windows, HP, um, and so I think that would be my recommendation instead of Chromebooks. I understand, you know, they're very costly to supply. Every single per every single student with a computer, but you really have to get to it. Is it really necessary to supply every single student with a piece of technology that they take home? You know, kids have a way of misusing the things that they're given. Um, last Friday in the lunchroom, someone found a way to hack on to our little TV we have hanging, and we were watching. Were you out there, Mr. Englert? What were we watching? Teeny bikini car wash something or another huh. all right well they they have a way of finding ways around the blocks that we set up and I talked to a few other kids um, at area schools Blair Taylor gave me a very interesting picture um, and they're not really used the way that they're supposed to you know and we have I've here's reports of you know people not being able to sleep very well because you know their their homework shift to being online and you know kids don't do their homework when they're supposed to you save it till 9 10 o'clock 
And so you're staring at a screen that, you know, is bad for your eye muscles and affects your REM cycles. Um, and so there's not, in my understanding, a whole lot of student support. And personally, my support for the referendum is sort of fleeting. Um, I think it'd be good if we got, say, uh, 100 real laptops and people could check them out. And then we just improve the things that we have. Because most kids have technology available at home. I think it's like 5% don't have technology at home. Um, and so, you know, kids could check that out and they'd be good, decent things that they're going to use in the future. You know, like he, he's using HP and he's got the best judge of character that I can think of. And Chromebooks, they're just obnoxious. You know, we haven't been trained on them. We've been trained on, on Windows and things like that. There's no classes teaching us on how Google works. Um, that you can't print off them, which is really obnoxious. Um, that and the student login, that's just a petty complaint. But the student login, my username for that Chromebook is 31 characters long, which wouldn't be able to fit on my driver's license if I wanted it to. Um, the one for just the computer lab is Ocale 15, so you know, slightly shorter than 31, as opposed to Ocale 15 at students.holman.k12.wisconsin or .wi.us. Um, and if you mess one little thing up, you know, you're shaking this flimsy little computer and you really want to scream at it. Um, so, you know, there's not a lot of student support for Chromebooks. They're, they're cheap and there's some flaws in them. Um, but if you shifted it to a better piece of technology than a Chromebook, the approval rating for it would go up back probably to 92%. Okay. Anything else? Um, nothing else. No, not really. Interesting perspective. Thank you for that. Um, and next, I will call on Anita Jagodzinski. Um, <coughs> I just wanted to encourage everyone to kind of keep an eye on what's happening at the state level and remember to contact your legislators and um, voice your opinions on what's happening with school funding, public schools, <coughs> voucher schools, whatever it is that is, is um, your passion. Um, as is happening with our legislature because things are happening really really quickly so if you do nothing else log on to the wheeler report and um read a list of the hundred different things that are happening at the state every day and um get some information there nonpartisan news media outlet that actually has an office in the capitol and they just report on what's happening because we are here to serve public education and also i would like to um thank the parent who came forward and spoke tonight I remember being a parent who came and spoke before I was on the school board and it's intimidating and scary. So um, thank you. I appreciate it. And um, that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Kate Mayer. Um, just like check, check what you just said, Anita. I'm so appreciative of anybody who comes before the board. It, it is a scary thing. And before I was on the board, I did the same thing. And I remember how well, it is scary. <laughs> just like, you just you want to come. You want the people on the board to look you in the eye and to appreciate you and to not think that you're a bad person. But that is our citizens' rights, and um, I want them to know that. Um, second thing, um, my report comes from SALC. Several months ago, we had the charge, and the question was asked, um, is there, excuse my voice, but is there a need to change the administrative rule that has the class size policy in our district? And so it has taken months and months. And some might feel like, wow, that's not a good thing to take months and months. I thought it was a good thing to take months and months because we had input from so many different people. Um, basically, though, what we have in answer to those two questions, is there a need to change the rule we have? And on our committee also, we also came up with the question, well, if we do change it, um, what would the impact be to our budget? Those were two 
incredibly important things. The first thing we did was look at that first question and gathered data. And I am so grateful to Julie Krakow and um, Wendy Savasky. They gathered data like you wouldn't believe, and I can't even imagine how many hours they did that to see what that impact would be. Um, but basically, what we got to is that there isn't a need to change the policy of what our district has, and that might be surprising to many people, thinking that perhaps our policy was unworthy for our kids. I believe that our SALC committee unanimously believes that the policy we have in place right now is the best policy for us and it is working for us. And so I'm just going to say that um, we want, we'd like the board to know, so all of my fellow board members to know that the administrative rule, which is 343.2, will remain unchanged. That's our recommendation. What that means is we are not looking at the temporary rule that we had a year ago. We are, we are recommending going back to the rule we have. We do believe it works. Um, part of what this comes from, and I just want to say, is that um, we have administrators dealing with this on a daily basis. One of them is Julie Krakow. And Julia, you're out there, right? Yes. <laughs> um, she looks on a daily basis at our class sizes. She has the same questions in mind, I think, that came when the first questions came up to the school board about should we do this or not. She's taking care of business um, in a really good way. And we have, um, we have a particular um, need in our district. We have lots of diff different schools. One of the things we want to make sure we do with our parents, we could have smaller class sizes if we shifted our kids around all the time. But we have parents that are coming to elementary schools and they're in that neighborhood school. And we honor the fact that those parents can ask for their kids to be in that school. Sometimes that makes us have bigger classrooms than others. Um, but what we're doing with our rule and with our, with our formula, we all believe, as they all say, as I said, we just all believe we would like for the board to know that we don't need to have a different policy I'm proud of what we studied. I'm proud of what Julie has done, Julie Krakow and Wendy, our administrators. I'm also proud of looking at our committee that looks at um, when do we need a new school, when don't we, all of that. Lots of data was gathered. Lots of data was gathered. And these two women did a lot to do that. Um, and we're just really comfortable saying we are okay with how it is. Good. Well, and I think Kate and I had chatted briefly about this. Well, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> we're going to have to go back to the meeting um, to see, because I don't know if it was an official or a formal motion. It may have been a motion, formal motion, but I don't know what the context of it was, if it was a temporary or how the wording was. But I think we'll go back, we'll pull the history on that and take a look at that and see if we need to take any specific action related to that um, policy or um, administrative rule, and we'll be bringing that back to the board um, and keep you in the loop. So, okay. but I know they just took that action. The the committee just took that action at the last meeting. And yes. So, thank you. Anything else, Kate? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Tim Menninger. Um, just a, a few <coughs> comments. Um, I know last meeting I didn't have any, and everybody was appreciative, but I do have a few tonight. 
I, I just want to echo uh, both Anita and Kate um, in their appreciation, always appreciative of public participation, and certainly as well one of the things I was going to mention in my brief comments is certainly stay attention to all the things happening in Madison. Uh, there are plenty of things happening down there as they affect public education and information is the best way to uh, uh, to uh, know what's happening there. So please continue to stay informed. Um, also, with this uh, wonderful stretch of cold weather we've been having, I know that uh, the kids have probably not been outside as much as they would like to have been. Matter of fact, I was uh, heard that coming in tonight and just want to thank all of the staff that's had to deal with all the extra things that are going on as a result of the kids and all that energy being cooped up indoors on these cold days. So certainly thanks to everyone for that as well. Um, and then with uh, the you know, spring soon upon us, it is March next week, as I said uh, earlier, this is probably the last board meeting we will start in the darkness until probably November again as daylight savings time <coughs> changes. Um, the clocks change in a couple of weeks. Um, encourage everyone, a lot of exciting things happening with winter sports as they're coming to a close. And what a great opportunity to cheer for Holman High School as all those uh, hard work now comes to uh, near the end as we get into the state tournament and playoff season. So continue to support the schools. Okay, thank you, Tim. Um, Lisa Collins. Um, just wanted to add that for our the Finance Committee, we have a new community member uh, participating on the Finance Committee, uh, a staff person um, by the name of Jennifer Shams. Um, she is a tag teacher for the district, newer to the district, um, and we're really happy to have her. She joined us for the first time last week when we were reviewing um, the budget and kind of how are we going to be talking about this at referendum and when people ask all those difficult questions and looking at um, some graphs and different things, ways to explain this to the public and she gave some really great feedback, it was a good discussion. Um, anything that we use to try to educate the public and the parents and teachers on why it is we're doing this and how it's going to impact the budget long term and short term um, really needs to be succinct and so thank you to, to Jay and anyone else that's been working on that with you to take that feedback into consideration. I know you've been working with a stakeholder group also to get more feedback on, you know, how to answer those difficult questions, you know, that the public will have coming into the referendum. Um, and, and it kind of also brought to the thought of the technology piece and obviously the building in, buildings and grounds and our uh, transportation fleet, um, finding out more details about what that will actually look like and having that be at a board meeting was, was discussed. Um, I've just had conversations with parents at the middle school and the high school and also kids at the high school and having questions about why do we need more technology? We've got you know some good technology now, why would we need that? And it would be nice to have some of the experts with the district that focus on the technology um, and IT department to really explain what that looks like to us um, and possibly have some teachers coming in that are really shining in that area to show how they're implementing the clerk curriculum in the classrooms because it's pretty amazing. I know Jan was in the schools last week um, working on some videos um, of students actually using the technology what the one-to-one -one would look like and so I don't know I, I think it would be a good thing for the board and have that be televised as well. So that's about it. Thank you Lisa and Gary Dunlap. I'd just like to remind everyone that spring is coming sooner or later. Really? Yeah. It is? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, I don't have any other comments tonight. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And I really don't have any comments either. I've got a couple things later on, but I would just note that um, committee re written reports, finance committee, buildings and grounds, personnel and governance, and student achievement and learning. You have the notes from their most recently approved minutes. Um, board meeting schedule, March 9th and the 23rd are regular March meetings. March 18th is WASB Day, Wisconsin Association of School Boards Day at the Capitol. Um, and then um, I, we had our workshop. I know that you've received some information from Matt Fail regarding the school board data request process. Um, 
we are getting some feedback on that, but I would just remind the board members that during this month as you attend your um, committee meetings to share that process with your committees because it also reflects and um, pertains to committee work that we're doing. And um, we're, we kind of want to spend this month sharing that information and then next month again we'll meet with Matt and talk about feedback that we've received from the committee. So please add that to your agendas um, so that you have an opportunity to speak on that. And then board meeting reflection, any thoughts or? except for the timeliness of this meeting. I always uh, keep my norms in front of me. Uh -huh. And I think every meeting that we have, we just, I don't know, I'm just really proud to be with all these people and we all have different opinions, but we all really respect each other. And the public can see what our norms are mm -hmm. and what we live by, but um, I like being a part of this group and how we deal with each other. I think we do okay. Thank you. Yes, the, the norms I think are available. We have them on our Dropbox and on in, in our folders. The norms, just so for the audience, they're basically outside of Robert's rules, <coughs> kind of rules that we would um, follow as a board meeting you know meeting rules those sorts of things that we come prepared that we maintain integrity of the board that we will support decisions of the board and I will tell you from a board uh, convention that I attended in workshop that I attended um, we aren't the only board that is talking about these sorts of things and it just shows that we are I guess progressive enough to want to think ahead for um, our, our district so that we follow these good good ways of behaving I guess is sort of what it is but and I need to ask for one last thing and I I forgot to add one more thing um, under my comments um, the Holman High School Renaissance celebrity waiter dinner and I hate using the word celebrity because mm -hmm. if anybody knows me even remotely well I don't like celebrity things but they have the annual fundraiser at Drugan's on March 26 they were gonna have it on Saturday the 28th but they changed the date to Friday, I'm sorry, Thursday the 26th. So if you're free and you want to have a good time, I'm hoping I'm getting a jump on anybody else because I haven't heard anybody else asking people to buy tickets. So I have a table if anybody's interested. Last year the tickets were 30 bucks. You get a really good dinner. You get 18 holes of golf. And we have a silent auction. We have entertainment. Um, there's a cash bar. Um, it's packed. It's really, really fun. People do goofy things. It, it's just a blast. So if you're interested, it's March 26th. I can get as big of a table as I need to get. So and for a good Holman cause. High School office. Yeah, all the money goes to um, Holman High School Renaissance, which rewards kids for getting good grades, getting their grade point average up, and it, it's a wonderful, wonderful program. So. And you can see grown-ups make idiots out of themselves. So <laughs> I'm willing to do it again. Okay. Can I ask a clarifying question? Sure. So has the date changed? They were I mean, going to have it on the Saturday, but apparently a lot of people could not make it on the Saturday. So I Thursday contacted, the and it has moved back to March 26, which is a Thursday, a weeknight. Right. So, but I guess there is no. I think there's no school the next day, from okay. what I'm told. Okay. I hope, right? Correct. So, and I would agree go. with can sleep with in. what you said. I've been to this, I think, three years in a row. I yeah. think you should come, Gary. You I would mean, like I'm this. I'm at Nick's table already. Because oh. really, really, oh, <laughs> because it, the most fun part is you have these really leaders in the district doing really stupid things there for money. Yeah, for money. For money. For money. Yes. To raise. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, for just anyhow, doing stupid that's things all. for free. Yeah. <laughs> yes. As opposed to that, it's very fun. So, so yeah. if you're interested, you can get tickets at the Holman High School office, or you can contact me or email me or whatever. So love to see you there. <coughs> well, with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So, I would so adjourn. You'd moved. I, I think did. Anita moved. Kate seconded. I'll second. Any discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. <clears throat> motion carries. We are adjourned.